This program has been brought to you by the Business Council of Australia. Authorised by R. Freelander, Business Council of Australia, Melbourne. The Business Council of Australia is hosting business leaders in Adelaide today to discuss the significant issues affecting the nation's economy. Our business editor, Ross Greenwood, is there. The Business Council of Australia's Strong Australia series in conjunction with Sky News today is in Adelaide and with me now the Chief Executive of the Business Council of Australia, Jennifer Westacott, also the Chief Executive of the Committee for Adelaide, Sam Dighton is with me as well. Jennifer, today we heard about the opportunities in South Australia, new government, really sort of, if you like, an aggressive Premier, wanting to get more growth out of South Australia, but the areas of, you know, the growth, it's whether it's ambitious ambitions are capable of being fulfilled right now. What did you take away from what you heard? Oh, I thought the ambition is fantastic. I thought his sense of direction, his sense of uh, the scale that can be done. This, and, and you listen to the Premier and you think this is kind of what we have to do with the country. We have to pick the things that we can scale up. We have to go hard on thing, things like skilling our people, developing our capabilities. We've got to go hard at removing the red tape and regulation that stops things getting done. So I was really heartened by his um, discussion today. And, and off the back of that, you know, he's actually getting stuff done. This, you know, this huge desalination plan, uh, this incredible uh, work that he's doing around the universities here, the work around AUKUS, introducing the first Hydrogen Act. But the thing that really tells me something about the opportunity in this state is that he resisted putting extra taxes into a budget. He knows that, that for the state to succeed and do all that ambition, you've got to have business investing. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a budget last week that was sensible and careful, didn't have all these taxes, these ad hoc payroll taxes. That sends a message to business. And, that, and, and in my view, business should sort of look at South Australia pretty optimistically and say, well, why wouldn't we relocate there? Yeah, so, Sam, you're here trying to advocate for Adelaide. And the reality is a lot of people think it's about festivals and wineries. Um, that's, that's the truth. But... What it really is now, it's about medical science, it's about AUKUS and what comes from that, the nuclear industry that will come. Um, it's also about the space industry that's coming, plus also some of the big resource projects that will be here in the future. Look, absolutely, Ross, and, and we're at that great moment in time where there's an opportunity with a, with a bold and ambitious government with, um, with opportunities in defence, as you say, but also a really strong and growing innovation hub at Lot 14 to really take, make a step change. So but for those who don't understand, explain Lot 14. Lot 14 is, is, an, is exactly that, an innovation hub, but it also sees a lot of the uh, high-tech companies have, have invested uh, to create uh, opportunity there. We've got the likes of Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, um, Google Cloud. We've got a, a range of... Uh, it's where your space global industry is largely based and, well. and our space industry. It's a, really a fantastic um, uh, place uh, in Adelaide, right in the CBD. So uh, but this is a great moment where we can really uh, see uh, Adelaide make a step change. But we've got to accelerate the way we think about it. We've got to accelerate our decision making. We need, we need government to accelerate the removal of, of impediments to, to capital being invested here. We've got great companies. Uh, what they need is capital investment to really make a, a step change in their capacity and their capability to become that supply chain into defence. What they also need is people though. And right now, with Australia getting one and a half million extra people in the next five years, South Australia's share of that, according to the population stats, is about 100,000. It doesn't seem like South Australia is attracting enough population, especially with the crisis of skill shortages in South Australia. Look, I think uh, th that may be true, but I think one of the things that, um, that the Committee for Adelaide is advocating, uh, strongly advocating for, for the government to do, is to think about how we unlock um, migration and, and the opportunities for migrants to come into the, the state. We, we know that um, a, a highly skilled migrant can come in and not be able to use their skills that they have been using in other countries because we don't recognise those skills here in, in, in Australia. You mean the propensity of taxi drivers in Adelaide as well? Well, I, th I think it's... <laughs> it's, it's being, being doctors or engineers. And it's probably more than that. It's, uh, I think it, it is, there is a, certainly a cultural element that we need to, to overcome. But I think it's, it's unlocking that and, and harnessing the, the skills that, that do exist there. And we know that... Um, that if we can create a, a welcoming and inclusive community, that uh, those highly skilled migrants who do come into our state 
uh, who bring families, who uh, participate in communities, uh, will be more likely to stay. And that's such an important aspect of, of talking about growing our population is that it's as much about preventing people leaving our state as it is about uh, attracting them in. So Jennifer, this skill shortage, it's a, it's a nationwide thing. Um, it adds to the, the price of wages, potentially mm. inflation and interest rates. Mm. And of course, it's all very well to throw more people at a problem, but that's not improving the productivity. No. That's one of the issues, not just for South Australia, but for the whole nation right now. Absolutely. Well, first of all, we've got to really get our migration settings right. We've got to look at these big projects across the country. We've got to think about the spatial kind of distribution of that increased population. We've got to get our housing systems working more effectively, we've got our planning systems working more effectively. But, but particularly we've got to get our skills and education system working more effectively because that's an absolute key to unlocking our productivity. More skilled people attracts investment, attracts kind of extra things that companies and businesses want to do. That makes us a more productive nation. The thing that's missing though, that we talked about uh, today as you know, is that some of the national fundamentals aren't right. So the, the national fundamentals on our competitiveness, you know, our tax system, our regulatory system, the fact that you can't get some of your skills recognised even though you've got comparable skills. The, 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 government's doing a, a, the federal government's doing a terrific job really starting to unpack the skill system, but we've got to go faster. So we've got to get our national settings right and then places like South Australia can really get going. And I don't think we can solve our productivity challenge until we're willing as a country to face into our lack of competitiveness on tax and the fact that we are just so over-regulated and it is so hard to do business. And, and the more friction that's in this system, the less investment, the less new machinery, the less new training, the less new projects, that's the productivity killer. Well, even today, Mike Henry, Chief Executive of BHP, said that even the massive expansion of Olympic Dam in South Australia, after having bought, paid $10 billion for Oz Minerals, well, he wouldn't commit as to whether they would do that expansion, largely because he says, well, things are so slow to actually happen in Australia. And, and maybe that could actually tip the balance in favour of another project somewhere else in the world. That is something that should send an alarm bell to Absolutely. people around the world, Absolutely. around Australia. Absolutely. And then we, we do have the levers. Like, we can't compete with what the Americans are doing on that inflation reduction. We just don't have that kind of capital. But there are other things we can do, like our planning and permitting system. It's too slow. Our skill system is too slow. You can't say to these big companies who want to rapidly skill up people for orcas or for cyber, send people for a three-year degree. That's not going to work. We have to say, how do we quickly assemble these micro-credentials, these skills, that get people the competencies that can do that work? Um, we just have to face into the fact that, you know, we, we are not uh, competitive. And I think Mike's point today was we've got to get those fundamentals right for these projects to go ahead. And we've got to get out of the way of getting things done. But the planning and permitting system is a, to me is something when I look at countries elsewhere in the world and I'm not talking about countries that sacrifice the environment at all, quite the opposite they just get things done really fast yeah. and Sam that's one of the issues Adelaide is in a unique position right now for massive expansion, economic expansion Indeed. you get a sense of the state government and the Premier the new Premier wants to go there but it kind of gets held back sometimes at a federal level well, look, I, I think that's right, and, and the, the Premier has expressed his frustrations in that regard. Uh, and I think that's then incumbent upon organisations like the Committee for Adelaide um, and the Business Council of Australia to really advocate at a national level uh, for, for opportunities to be unlocked in, in places like Adelaide. So we, at the Committee for Adelaide, we are, uh, we are always looking to find ways to uh, further the, what is best for Adelaide. That's the lens that we look through when we're thinking about issues. And so in order to, uh, for us to partner with the, the, the Business Council of Australia to pursue opportunities to un understand and unlock those, those national issues, that's where we're going to put our effort. OK, so one other aspect. If you were able to get this massive chunk of population through the door for the skills shortages, for the big projects yeah. that are coming, AUKUS is one very classic example of that. Where are they going to live? It's exactly the question that, and the right one to be asking, Ross. Um, the housing crisis is real and that's right now before we have these, this massive influx of people to work in these uh, big projects. 
the, the government has, and we applaud the government for, in, in the recent budget, um, providing some land tax relief for build to rent models. I, we think the government can do, go further to unlock that as an opportunity, to de risk the financial model for build to rent, um, because we know that. Uh, that the, uh, the construction of rented properties um, on existing infrastructure corridors uh, located close to hospitals and schools and shops will grow our population, will create that, uh, that housing supply that we so desperately need if we are going to attract and keep uh, the, the migrants into South Australia. So Jennifer, I've got to also ask you about the current issue of the legislation the government's seeking to push through the parliament. Same job, same pay, they, they call it euphemistically. Um, that in many ways suggests that it wants to kill off labour hire, um, which even Mike Henry, the chief executive of BHP today, says has real implications for the projects that they will undertake in Australia in the future. Do you sense that the government, the federal government, has a genuine understanding of what the implications are of that legislation? Based on what we've seen, uh, I don't think so, because you know you, you saw BHP today talk about the cost implications of this one piece of legislation. It was one point three billion dollars. One point three billion dollars. Now a year. That's, right. that's a lot of money, and that's going to like, do I do this project or do I do that project? Well, at one point three billion dollars, even for a big company like BHP, that's going to mean something doesn't get done. So let's go back to basics here. The government does not want labour hire. Uh, to be used. And I don't understand that because labour hire is a legitimate form of getting things done. And we've been talking today about these massive projects, uh, AUKUS, this big desal plant, the Olympic Dam itself. Um, they require labour to kind of come and go in peaks and, and drops and, and you need to manage a very flexible workforce. But effectively what the government's proposing is that for every single worker, irrespective of whether they're two days, two weeks, two months in a host employer, they're going to have to be paid exactly the same conditions and terms as people working at that site. How is that going to work in practice? I mean, if I'm an engineer in BHP and I've been there for 15 years, I'm doing this highly specialised piece of work, um, I've negotiated an enterprise agreement, I've got bonuses, I've got training, I've got you know, potentially childcare allowances. And then someone comes along and they're going to work for two months, they're going to get exactly the same. How fair is that? Or from the labour hire firm, I've done this work with my employees. Many of these people are incredibly well paid. Um, I've got an EBA. Uh, now whenever my workers go onto a site, they've got to be paid what the employer, the host employer... I mean, it's just not going to be practical, Ross. Apart from the fact it's going to kill flexibility in the economy. And then small business suddenly has to work out, well, are you doing exactly the same job as me? Um, you, know, you know, someone coming into BHP who's an engineer, is that the same as the 15-year engineer? I mean, I just don't know what we're trying to solve for. I really don't. And I just feel at this time in our national kind of trajectory, when productivity is flatlined, when the economy's got a one in front of its growth number, why would you make it harder to do things? It's so true. It's interesting also in a South Australian perspective, because there are so many big projects coming into the future, that you've got to get these skilled people. And in many cases, they're going to be short-term workers, not longer-term workers as well. So this is all part of the, the education, the skills training, but then also the attraction of talent. One thing from the Premier today that I got was really he is prepared to compete against other state premiers to try and get their talent, to try and get their projects, to try and get even their events. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a really good point because if you look at the range of projects going on around the country... Uh, that draw of skills and the, and the dilution of skills uh, as, as projects are going on and competing with, with each other, uh, whether that's in Western Sydney uh, or, or in Adelaide, um, or, or indeed uh, as part of our energy utility, uh, uh, energy grid transition, there is such a draw for people to, to uh, you know, be pulled and make choices about where they want to live and where they want to locate their family. I think we need to think about it in the context of, of a whole ecosystem of skills, though, because it's not just about nuclear physicists uh, joining the AUKUS program. It's also about house, you know, uh, bricklayers yep. and carpenters and electricians and 
uh, lighting assistance at, at Adelaide's fantastic festivals, and it's also uh, you know uh, doctors and nurses, and, and as we look in a futuristic way at the the future industry of, of Adelaide and South Australia, as as um, our population grows older and the the care industry requires a, a an upskilling and uh, of people, we're going to need to really upskill quickly. Uh, to be able to cope with these future industries, let alone the advanced manufacturing, the cyber security, the, the high tech industries that we are really focusing on uh, developing in Adelaide, which will be uh, wealth creators for the state. Sam Dighton from the Committee for Adelaide and also Jennifer Westacott from the Business Council of Australia. Many thanks for your time today.